you need to watch out for the spirit of the python. That's what this message is all about today. It is in the body of Christ and moving through uh, the believers. Trying to restrict them, that is the, the, the purpose of the, of the spirit of the python, is to restrict uh, the, the believer uh, in, in their faith walk, in their love walk, uh, in communicating with, with Abba Father. This is the purpose of that spirit. And so I thank you for watching today and for viewing. Uh, I believe that this is a very important message to the body of Christ. And, and I thank you uh, for tuning in today. Uh, if you have comments, please uh, just let them flow uh, like a river today in the name of Jesus. And let's pray together. Father, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, Lord, that your mercies are new every morning to us. Thank you for favor, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you are ministering and speaking uh, to your people today. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for the prophetic rising up strong uh, in the body of Christ. That we might hear what the Spirit would say unto us today. In the name of Jesus, I bind up every hindering force, every electronical hindrance, every hindrance uh, of the religious mindset. Uh, in the name of Jesus, and it cannot operate um, in this session today, in the name of Jesus, I forbid it to operate, and I thank you, Lord, for your spirit having freedom to move in our hearts and in our bodies and in our minds uh, this day in the name of Jesus. Can you say amen with me? Hallelujah. God is a great and a mighty God. And he will take care of every evil spirit that tries to come and hinder your walk with the Lord. That's the bottom line. Hallelujah. But there are things that we need to do as believers. And I'm going to talk about four different things today. But we're going to start in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 23, starting in verse 1. Because the, the python spirit comes to squeeze out the life, the spiritual life, out of every believer. And if it can take hold uh, in your family and in your ministry and in your body, and especially in your mind, uh, then it can uh, hinder your walk with the Lord. And what we want to do is freedom. Freedom is the bottom line. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, our freedom. Hallelujah. And God wants you free today. He wants you free of sickness, free of poverty, free especially of a religious mindset. And so we want the, the title of this message is Destroy the Python Spirit. You know, there's many other evil spirits that are roaming about in the body of Christ. Uh, but that is not my, my message today. Uh, but we do see that spirit of, of Jezebel uh, floating through the, uh, the body and through the congregations. And, and that spirit of Jezebel come against, comes against the authority of Jesus Christ and the authority that he has set upon the earth especially the apostles and the prophets. But that's not my message today. My message is to get rid or destroy that spirit of the python. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 1, it says, Then Jesus spake to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. They were teachers of the law. This rule, that rule. Especially you cannot heal on the Sabbath. And how many times did Jesus uh, come against uh, that, uh, that law? Uh, according to, to the scribes and the Pharisees, he broke the law. But Jesus said, I've come to fulfill the law. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. 
Number three, all therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, and whatsoever uh, they they and they that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and they do not. You know, in the book of James, it says, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only, because if you're only a hearer, then you will be deceived. But thank you, Jesus. We are doers of the word. Hallelujah. We are doers of his, of his word, and we are set free. It says, uh, verse 4, for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, or people's shoulders, but they themselves will not even lift a little finger to get it off. Hallelujah. Jesus said in Luke 4, I've come to set the captive free. Hallelujah. To, to uh, destroy the yokes. Praise the name of Jesus. And, and then in verse 5 it says, But their works they do so that men can see them. So that mankind uh, can uh, give them uh, accolades and, and, and compliments and and um, they make abroad their their phylacteries and in, enlarge their borders and of their garments and uh, the love they love the uppermost rooms at the feast and the they want the, the good seats, the main seats, hallelujah, in the synagogues. And they want everyone to call them, oh, rabbi, rabbi, master, master, teacher, teacher. They want uh, all of that, that uh, they want the, the glory that needs to go to, to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They want it for themselves. They want it for themselves. So that religious mindset, that's the religious mindset right there. And we, it will take hold if you allow it to. But we're not going to allow it to today. This is why this message is coming forth. Because I had a vision. I had a vision of a person wrapped up in, in with, a, a, with a python. They squeeze the life out of their prey and then they, they swallow them whole. And I had a vision and then the Lord said, destroy the python spirit. And so that's why this message is coming forth today. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, in Galatians 6, 2, it says that we are to bear one another's burdens. That word bear there does not mean that we take on all of their burdens, all of their worries, all of their disappointments, all of their discouragements. We, we don't take that on ourselves. What does it mean to bear one another's burdens? You know, their sister Rebecca Wheeler uh, taught on this once, and she said, you know, to bear one another's burdens means that you take on the excess. Those things that are excess are above uh, what that person can bear. But it also means, and I agree with that 100%, and, but it also means uh, that we take those things through prayer to the Father. We say, this is what this person is going through. I'm praying for them. I'm believing for them. I'm speaking over them. I'm proclaiming the word over them. And we take it to the Father. We do not take it upon ourselves. You know, there are, there are people out there that if they don't have anything to worry about, they'll look for someone who, who's in trouble and, and try to fix it for them. That's a religious mindset right there. Destroy the python spirit. In Isaiah 58, this is our, and I've said this before, this is our scripture that the Lord gave us over 30 years ago. He said, read it every single day because this is your ministry. Hallelujah. And it start, starting in verse 6, is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness? Hallelujah. To get rid of the python spirit. Praise the name of Jesus. And to undo the heavy burdens 
and to let the oppressed go free. Woo, thank you, Lord. I know those comments are coming forth. Just keep them coming. Praise the name of Jesus. There are people that need words from you today. Uh, I, I, the, those that, that move in the prophetic, let the Lord use you today in the name of Jesus. And to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke. See, people get yoked down with busyness. People get yoked down uh, with uh, uh, and, 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 and wrapped up in, in sickness and disease and doubt and unbelief and, and condemnation. And then there was a, there's a real big one, and that's pride. Ooh, we're going to deal with that in a few moments. Oh, oh then we have those yokes of, of not being able to grow. Uh, we've got a bunch of little uh, pygmies. Oh, a bunch of, of uh, little people running about that have not grown up uh, in the body of Christ. Uh, those that have been hindered uh, with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and have been told uh, that you don't have to speak in tongues and you don't have to have that that baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, anymore. It's gone away. It's passed away. All of the gifts have passed away. Miracles have passed away. <laughs> Woo! I say, get rid of that python spirit. Uh, and then they teach people, oh, uh, give until it hurts. Have you ever heard that? Have you ever heard that phrase, give until it hurts? When that's definitely contrary uh, to the word of God that says that God loves a cheerful giver. And as you give, he's going to give you more to give. Praise the name of Jesus. There's no sorrow in his commandments. The, his commandments are not grievous. And whatever he tells you to do, do it. Do it. And then people's faith and their love walk has been hindered uh, by this um, religious mindset. Oh, you got to love those that look like you. Uh, smell like you, go to the same church that you go to, uh, and if they don't, you just cast them on out. Well, we learned that very, very strongly that that's not the heart of God because the heart of God is close to the outcast. And it says that you're going to be blessed if you give into the poor. Oh, glory. Lord, you're doing a good job today. Hallelujah. A good job. A good job. A good job. We do not want to be restricted in any way. We want freedom to, to worship him. We want freedom to dance. We want freedom. Set free to worship. I'm set free to praise him. I'm set free to rejoice around God's throne. I'll dance, I'll sing, I'll shout, I'll sing. Hallelujah, amen. Let his praises ring. Set free to rejoice forevermore. Set free. Set free of, that, of, of any type of mindset that is against the word of God. Hallelujah. And so these are the four things I want you to remember today. Number one. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, he says the first thing to do to get to destroy the python spirit and, and that uh, that that python will let go of you is to come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Praise the name of Jesus. He will give you rest. He will give you rest. And right now I'm seeing the word rest and I'm seeing the R stands for righteousness. Hallelujah. The E stands for eternal life. Hallelujah. S stands for salvation. And T stands for the truth. Hallelujah. He will give you all of that if you come unto him. With every situation, with every problem, with everything that you are, are being bound up with. I break those bounds right now in the name of Jesus. I break those yokes in the name of Jesus. I break the yoke of cancer right now. I break the yoke of unworthiness right now. I break the yoke of poverty right now. I break the yoke, oh, hallelujah, of religion off of 
of you in the name of Jesus. So the first thing to get rid of the python is to come unto Jesus. Number two, let's go to the book of James. In the book of James, we find several things that he says to us about getting or destroying that python. In chapter 4, starting in verse 7, it says, Submit yourself unto God. I love submission. You know, I'm a, I'm a not only a minister of God, but I am a wife. And I, I submit to my husband as the word of God says, as he is submitted unto the Lord. And I love that word submit and submission. Because you know what it means to me? It means covering. Covering. If, if, uh, if my husband wants to do one, one thing and I'm not completely in agreement with that, if I will submit unto him, I praise the name of Jesus, he's the one that's going to stand before Jesus and he will give an answer uh, to his yes or no, hallelujah. And if he, if, he, if he makes the wrong decision, then he's the one that will be accountable for it, not me. If I will submit unto him, hallelujah, this word says, Submit yourself unto God. Submit yourself to this word right here. And then it says resist the devil. Don't let the python in. Don't let it be on your doorstep. Don't go into the middle of the swamp where the pythons are. Stay out of the territory where they operate. Stay in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. We talked about this last time. If you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Then it says, resist the devil, and he will have to flee from you. Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. We go into his presence with thanksgiving and praise and worship, and then he, he begins to uh, just pour out of his spirit upon us, and we become uh, just wrapped up, tied up, and bundled up in Jesus. Can you say amen? Cleanse your hands. Purify your hearts. Be, be afflicted and mourn. What does that mean? Be afflicted and mourn. Be, a t be touched with the infirmities of others. Hallelujah. Desire uh, to have those needs uh, that you have and that others have around you, uh, that they be met by, by the Lord. You know, I told someone this morning that, that lives in Peru. I said, when you look out in, in, onto mankind, uh, into your family and into your friends and into other people, uh, when you listen to, to people uh, that are having difficulties, the needs can be overwhelming. And we were told that by a prophet of God. He gave us a word uh, many, many years ago. And he said, you will see many, many needs. And if you try to meet those needs, they will, it will be overwhelming to you. But he said you need to be led by the Spirit in meeting those needs. And that, that way you will not be overwhelmed. You will not be uh, restricted in any way. If you are led by the Spirit of God, you are one of his sons. Hallelujah. And it says, be afflicted and mourn. That means to pray. That means to intercede. That doesn't mean that you're, you're sad all the time. And it says, in weep, let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy uh, to heaviness. What does that mean? It means that you're, you're before the Lord interceding and travailing uh, for, for those that, that have those needs. That will keep the the python spirit away from you. And then in verse 10 it says, humble yourself. Remember I said that, that pride was a big, uh, 
an area that brings in the pythons. They just, they can sense it. They sense because there is a, a smell that goes along with pride. Just like there's a smell that goes along with most of the cancers. Sometimes I've walked into a congregation or a group of people and I knew that cancer was in the room. It, it smells like a cesspool. And so does pride. It stinks in God's nostrils. Can you say amen? And then, oh, I love this one. And when I saw uh, verse 11, I was, um, I was thinking about it. And, and I was in my kitchen uh, yesterday morning. And, and I had to repent uh, before I could even teach this message. And it says, speak not evil one of another. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother, that's brother or sister, speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. And I had to repent for some things that I had said about an individual, things that I had spoken over an individual. And I repented and I received forgiveness and, and he put me back into righteousness. Oh, praise the name of Jesus for repentance. So repentance will will help loose that 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 yoke off of you and that that binding chain off of you. Let's and the, the third one is found in Isaiah ten twenty seven. And it says, And it shall come to pass that day that his burden shall be taken away from off his shoulder, off of your shoulder, and your yoke from off of your neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Anointing fall on us today. In the name of Jesus. The anointing is on the word of God. And when you speak the word of God with the power of the Holy Spirit, that is the anointing. And the anointing is flowing out to you today in Jesus' name to destroy the python, the thing that has kept you bound up from walking in your calling, from walking in the spirit, from walking in faith and in love, whatever it is that has had you yoked. We're supposed to be yoked up with Jesus. I didn't cover that in Matthew. Matthew chapter, uh, what is it, eleven twenty-eight. In 29, it says, get yoked up with him. Get yoked up with Jesus. And when you're yoked up with Jesus, then you go where Jesus goes. You say what Jesus says. You do what Jesus does. Hallelujah! Because wherever you're yoked, that's where you're going to operate. So we want to be yoked up with the Word of God. We want to be yoked up with the Spirit of God. Anointing. That was number three. Number four is found in Titus chapters one and two. Let's go over there right quickly before I bring this to a conclusion here. Yes, I hear you. I hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your, your words of encouragement. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Titus 1 9. We, we are to hear sound doctrine. And if it's not sound doctrine, if it's not the word of God, then if it's a false doctrine, we are to cast it aside and burn it up. Burn it up. Jude chapter 1, verse 9. No, I'm not in Jude. I'm in Titus. Excuse me. Titus chapter... 1 verse 9. Thank you, Lord. We hear your spirit, Lord, in Jesus' name. It says, holding fast to the faithful word as you have been taught, that he may be able to, by sound doctrine, both exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Hear Sound doctrine, teach and preach sound doctrine. 
then we're able to convince people to come to the Lord and come into the kingdom of God. And then in Titus 2, verse 1, But speak the things which become sound doctrine. We don't, we don't preach and teach Reader's Digest. We don't preach and teach about the football game. We don't preach and teach about the things that, uh, that, that are not concerning the Word of God. Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ. I love that. One of my favorite scriptures in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for your grace and mercy. I thank you for those that have been listening to this message today. I thank you, Lord, that you are breaking off those yokes, those yokes that have kept them bound and kept them restricted in the name of Jesus. I see those uh, being uh, loosed off of them in Jesus' name. And we give you all the praise and all the glory for the freedom Freedom to move, freedom to live and move and have our being in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I loose, I loose that, uh, those uh, cancer uh, in, your, in your abdomen and in your pancreas. I loose that cancer from you right now. I tell it to dry up and be gone from your body, uh, to drop off of you in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Diabetes, I say, be loosed and be broken off of that. There's three people that are listening to me right now that you have issues with, with your uh, high sugar levels. And the Lord is moving in, in your body right now uh, to eliminate, to destroy uh, that, those, those python spirits in the name of Jesus. And Lord, help us to be free to think like you think. We have the mind of Christ. Thank you for that religious mindset being gone from every person listening in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord forever. I see young women right now. I see uh, that you're, you, you know that you have a call on your life, and, but you have small children, and, and you're saying, well, I'm just not doing anything for the Lord. Let me tell you something. Every time... You have opportunity to pray. Every time you have opportunity to study the word, do it. Every time you have opportunity uh, to watch a video or, or listen to a, a teaching tape, uh, do it. Hallelujah. Because this is a time that you're uh, in a preparation time. This is not a wasted time. So change that thinking. Glorify God in everything that you do. And raising up those children with the Word of God is critical and valuable and precious to the Lord. In Jesus' name, if you need Jesus today, it says, All who call upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. Believe that He is the Son of God and that He died for you. On Calvary, he shed his blood for you, and he rose again for you to give you victory. Hallelujah. Receive Jesus today. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit today. Let those tongues come forth. It's powerful. It's communication with the Father. It will build you up. In Jesus' name, I thank you, and I bless you for watching.